18 over 62. So, um, 70 and 12. Okay, look at my finger. Okay. So, I'm going to check your, look straight ahead. Check the pupillary reflex. Same on the other side. You do not have to do the visual fields for this. We're going to skip visual field, and we're going to skip the Ren and Weber. So, I'm going to look straight ahead. And look at I so the red reflex. Red no red no. Okay. Tell me if you feel it's the same on both sides. Mm -hmm. Okay. Clench your teeth. Okay, open your mouth. Okay. Push against my hand. Push back. Shrug your shoulders. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Medium. Okay. Say ah. Uh. Ah. Uh. Gag. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that's good. Okay, stick your tongue out. Oh no. Turn right, left. Okay, close your eyes real tight. Open it. Smile. Okay. Do you hear this? Yes. Okay, check the ears. Same on the other side. Okay, pull me towards you. Pull. Push away. Okay, push up with your leg. Push down. Push out. Push back. Same on the other side. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we do biceps, triceps, Ricky radialis. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Knee and ankle. I'm hitting the Achilles tendon. And I'm doing the Babinski with this. Sure. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Just got iron feet. Okay. So now we're going to do uh, some sensory tests. Of does this feel the same on both sides? Mm -hmm. So her feet are naked, so I must do I the same that. thing on the feet. Okay, and then I want you to do this. Okay, take this heel and run it down the front of your shin. Okay, so we did the, the sitting neural stuff. And I'm going to listen to the lungs, deep breath. Careful to avoid the vertebrae and the scapula in the back. So listen to about... Um, three or four areas on both sides in the back. Now listen under the arm. Not too far down because the lung ends down here. So right about there. Same on this side. Same up here. And over here. Okay. Now we're going to do the neck. I haven't done the neck yet. You can do it in different orders as long as you cover everything. Thyroid, carotid. Listen to the carotid for buoys. Okay, you can lie down. Okay, so the, the actual proper way, I mean, you can do it either way you want, but the preferred way of examining lying down is uh, from the right side because you can, uh, it's more comfortable to reach the left side from this position. <laughs> So I'm going to listen to, first I'm going to see where the sternum changes, which is right here. So this is the second intercostal space. So I'm going to listen to the uh, aortic sound in the right second intercostal space, pulmonic in the, the second left intercostal space, and the point of maximum impulse along the left sternal border. I'm going to Listen also with the bell, because you can hear different things with the bell. I'm listening for S1 and S2. In this area, I want to listen for S2 splitting and inspiration. And if I hear a murmur, then what I would what I need to do is to feel over the murmur. So if there's a murmur up here, you would do this. And if there's one here, this. And if it's down here, you feel this. 
remember uh, would feel like a purring sensation, uh, and that would help you to classify murmurs. So that's very important. Grade four has a thrill. Grade four, five, and six have a thrill. Six is the loudest murmur. One is a barely audible murmur. Six is one that you almost could hear with, with your stethoscope right here, just barely on the body, very loud. Okay. Um, so point of maximum impulse, you want to look for that. It's over here, it's abnormal. This is a normal area. Make with the feel a line. Let's see your abdomen. So I'm going to look first, flat abdomen. Then I'm going to listen next. Remember, you have to listen before you palpate. Okay, listen in the four quadrants. And the upper ones, I'm listening for renal artery, uh, brewery, which should be shh, seem like a murmur, but it's over an artery. And the aortic, for, or aorta for narrowing or uh, dilation of the aorta. And I'll, I'll percuss here for liver size, percuss here for spleen. Take a deep breath. I'm going to feel the uh, border of the liver. Deep breath. So you can feel the border here. Spleen, you usually don't feel. Okay, so now I've got an idea of the size of the liver and spleen. Now I'm just going to do a very light palpation in the four quadrants. And then I'm going to do a deeper palpation. So take a deep breath. So now if she had hip complaints, then I would examine the hips. Yeah. And if she had knee complaints, I would examine the knees, because it's very convenient to do that. But while we're here, um, I'm going to talk about two signs. You don't have to do this in the exam, but I just want to uh, tell you what they are. This is the obturator sign, which we'll talk about in a minute. So you flex the hip and you do this. These are for appendicitis. And this is the iliopsoas sign. Push, push up against my hand. So if it, either of those pro provoke pain in this area, then that's a positive sign for acute appendicitis. The other thing, if say if she had appendicitis, which is usually right lower quadrant, um, this would be direct tenderness. So she had when I push down here, she says, "Oh, that hurts." And if I push down and let go, and it's worse. That's called rebound tenderness. There's also something called the referred pain or Rove's Rovesing sign, which is you push down here, and when you push down here, she feels a pain over here. It's referred to the other side. So you don't have to do those signs. I just wanted to show you. I give an image of her lying down. Okay, stand up. Okay, put your feet together, hands at your side, close your eyes. Okay, good. Okay, open your eyes. Tell her to open her eyes before she walks. Okay, walk. Normal walk. You come back, heel the toe. Okay, okay. drunk? Okay. I'm just not good at this. You were good up to this point. You were perfect. <laughs> Maybe we better do this test.